everyone, I'm Mary Delgado with the Blockchain Herd. I wanna thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Please don't forget to hit the like button and ask your friends to subscribe as well. Thank you for your comments and suggestions too. Keep those coming. So today I have a guest. Um, he is the founder of Freehold. His name is Patrick Stanley. And today we're gonna to find out what Freehold is all about. So welcome, Patrick. Thanks for having me, Mary. So why don't you tell me and my viewers um, all about you and how you got into the crypto space? Yeah, sure. Um, so I took a very traditional kind of startup route um, out of college, started my own company, sold it, um, then started working as a uh, as an employee at an, another startup, like a fintech startup, where we did uh, online lending. So we did like two billion dollars in loans from a standing start within three years and we scaled the company up to about 200 employees and i was um first employee so i got a i got a lot of um, experience in a short period of time and kind of just growth scaling um i i took about eight months off i was a little bit burnt out um and just was looking around corners and reading more on what i was already interested in which was bitcoin and crypto and um I found Blockstack. Um, it was kind of like a diamond in the rough. I, I I was just putting pieces together and and kind of figuring that you know Bitcoin would be sort of um, what people would would eventually turn to to build on because it's so reliable. And, and Blockstack was essentially architecting these um, decentralized, secure uh, applications um, uh, that are connected to Bitcoin. So I worked there as the head of growth for about three and a half years, uh, and um, you know we had we we grew a lot, and I um, then uh, recently spun out to start Freehold. Freehold is a new way for communities to organize themselves, and um, and essentially generate uh, high impact from those who are hodlers of specific currencies. So the, the concept is um, the concept can be like simply reduced to the following. Um, you can't enter a free a freehold is like a space or an application or a community. You can't enter it unless you are holding some some of the respective cryptocurrency. So it uses tokens as an access control mechanism, like walking up to a door and saying, "Can I come in?" And if you don't have the right balance or a, you know. Uh, um, of the respective cryptocurrency, you cannot come in. It's kind of like HODL or GTFO. Um, and and um, I can get into more about why um, that's kind of important, um, but I'll stop there for now. Okay, so, so if I understand correctly, you're saying that in order for you to become a part of the Freehold community that you have to have cryptocurrency and then you can use that cryptocurrency to gain access. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And folks, um, right now, I have folks simply earning their way in. So no one can buy their way in at the moment. Now we may open up that feature later. Mm -hmm. But folks just earn their way in by doing um, doing tasks that have like high impact. So some of those tasks are just creating educational content, whether it's like YouTube video or blog post and sharing it. So if you create an educational video, anyone can create that and post it mm -hmm. on YouTube, if you will, then you're rewarded with tokens? Yeah, so right now we're rewarding in Bitcoin. So the initiation task is currently um, paying out $50. And <clears throat> folks, once they're in, then essentially get treated as um, essentially like contractors in, uh, in, within the community and so long as they hold. Um, so if they liquidate their Bitcoin, then they're forced out, out of the freehold and they, and they no longer get, um, they no longer get access to that community and they no longer get access to opportunities, et cetera. So, uh, you know, some folks have already made like almost a thousand dollars just just doing tasks and collective challenges really effectively. And those folks are kind of building up their reputation within the first freehold, uh, which is, which is um, which is essentially all about Bitcoin uh, and and stacks, which is uh, which is another uh, cryptocurrency. Okay. 
So if I understand then, um, trying to process this in my mind, you have different levels of, depending on what you create and you put out in the community, what you will pay. How do you figure out, depending on what you just put out there in the community, how much you will pay? Sure. Um, so, um, I, I've been in, I've been in like gr uh, growth worlds for the past like ten years, so I have a better understanding of what the kind of like I, I have a fairly good understanding of you know what things are worth um, in terms of like getting them done. Like for example, um, I had the community essentially uh, work to get uh, myself and Maneve on a bunch of podcasts. This is one of them. So essentially, instead of hiring a PR firm for fifteen thousand um, dollars a month. I can, if, if I want to, instead commission the community. They're, they're like very intellectually uh, curious people, like very sharp, very hardworking um, to essentially like, you know, help. That, that's a very self-serving, it's a self-serving thing in some sense and also kind of helps the freehold in, in another sense, but excuse me. Um, mostly, mostly, what, mostly what we're doing is we're just, we're just, um, you know, kind of like, we're not we're not putting like thousand dollar bounties out for things that aren't worth a thousand dollars. Like we're 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 trying we're trying to actually we're trying to actually um, be very economical and and the way we validate whether this model works um, is by uh, is by seeing whether the output is greater than the input. Right. So there's some there's some objective measures that you would have like just like a company where you're like right, we hit this goal and that's like an objectively measurable goal where you know, we didn't spend over the amount it should take to hit the goal. We actually spent under the amount it took to hit the goal. Right. So are you in essence then saying that I should charge you $15,000 for this interview? I'm totally kidding uh, though. <laughs> uh, now I'm trying to get it on the cheap. Um, <laughs> um, no, but I will, I will say like, like ultimately if you like zoom out of what I'm trying to do here, um, I think, I think blockchain, I think blockchains kind of look a little bit like a cap table, you know, cap table and in, in startup terms is like, you know, who owns how much of your company. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for Bitcoin, it's like the Winkle Voss twins uh, who are investors in Blockstack and, you know, what they own, like 1% of Bitcoin. So they're, they're pretty big stakeholders on the Bitcoin cap table. Now, the problem is on most blockchain cap tables, there's very few people that are doing a ton of work. So those are called free riders, not to be confused with free loaders. Free riders are folks who they have bought the token, but they aren't actively um, trying to make the token um, more oh. useful exactly or, or build with it. And that, that's, that's kind of, that's, that kind of like slows things down. Actually, if you really, if you think about it, like, um, you know, yes, people can provide liquidity. They can provide like a price floor. Um, but then what you have is like very few builders actually building building things. And so what I what I thought of was like, uh, what if you just focused on the people who not only held, but also had an impact? So both building and educating those two tracks. Mm -hmm. And if you kind of zoom out, you think, OK, well, if this can be done in a regulatorily compliant way and um, and and um, and, you know, folks can indeed have a high impact, like so instead of having, you know, five people working on a startup, you have 300 people working uh, as a community. Um, I think a new breed of founder might actually emerge from from this model. And, um, and I feel like this model is like fairly, fairly, um, fairly air. I don't know if it's airtight, we'll see, we're going to validate it. But, you know, the, I think if like, you know, the last two decades were, were um, defined by salesperson as founder, so you have like, Mark, you have like a, you know, Benioff and Steve Jobs and all that, and that, or engineers founders. So you have like, you know, Zuckerberg and, you know, the, the, the Collison brothers, et cetera. I think this next day, a next decade would be marked by community founder or community builder as founder. And these are folks who, um, they leverage code, capital, media, and, uh, and software. Yeah. So code, capital, and media to essentially accomplish their goals and oh in community to accomplish their goals and that cap community is capital right it's like human capital so um they 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 would not they might not go to sand hill road and ask for you know 
$3 million to start a, an eight person startup, they, they might, um, they might begin mining a token for which they become large stakeholders and they get thousands of people to work, work on it. So it sounds to me like what you're, what you're trying to do uh, within Freehold is um, kind of bring mass adoption, I guess, into this space. And at the same time, while you're bringing mass adoption is you're rewarding people for trying to bring that adoption into the space. Because uh, uh, let's face it, the more people that learn about uh, crypto and what, um, what it can do, all the different areas that you can create within the blockchain, then that will, that will just, just grow. So it sounds to me like what you're trying to do is reward those people that are the, the innovators, the, the marketers, if you will, the developers uh, in bringing mass adoption into the space. Yeah, I think that's definitely that's definitely part of it. And ideally, I mean, it's it's ideal for people to know a lot about blockchains. However, a lot of people will will um, either never never get their arms around it or will just benefit from their use. And I think like um, some of the you know some of the, like you you could for example um, be a part of like an an, an affinity. Um, token freehold let's say like dollar sign vegan or dollar sign mars like terraform mars and everyone who hodls is essentially in on the mission and the idea and they're rewarding themselves for doing good work and like converting new holders and the people who don't are against that aren't going to buy those tokens they're not going to be part of that community they're not going to do work work mm -hmm. so like those those folks might have really no concept of how blockchains work, but they know that there's um, there's a, a value unit where their virtue and values are attached to it, essentially. Do you have your your own coin? No, I, you know, I've so I've been I've been uh, kind of like think I, I launched last month, and you know this idea has been germinating uh, since last October, so for like a year, and one of the things I, I think is right. And I could change my mind later, but I think, I think you actually don't want a token for, for this specific um, strategy. I think a token kind of diffuses focus. And um, I think it's better for us to be like a digital no man's land, at least for now, maybe later, but you know, at least for now, that way, like any project can plug into us. Wow. So you just launched a month ago. That's, yeah. that's fantastic. Um, yeah. How long have you had this uh, concept of what you wanted to do in your mind before launch? Yeah, so um, there's um, there's a really good um, part uh, sort of uh, ex partner at Andreessen Horowitz named Balaji Shrinivasan, um, who is the CTO of Coinbase. Uh, he's just total polymath. He like pre he like predicted how bad the virus would be when everyone else was saying it wouldn't be like super smart guy. Um, I had a dinner with him at the last Blockstack Summit in 2019, and um, you know, we spent like hours kind of like talking about concepts within this idea. Um, and um, so the proof of HODL thing, you know, really started thinking about that a year ago. And then there's been, there's been you know, there's been areas I've explored um, that kind of punched it up uh, a bit more, like, um, <clears throat> You know, Joel Menegger has this post called Thin, Thin Apps, um, where he kind of like puts good language around, you know, what this new model of like user staking looks like. Like you're, you're using it, you're, you're kind of like, you're kind of like, um, you're kind of bringing utility to hodling beyond just staking. You can like use an application or earn or like be a part of the workforce of that application, et cetera but you got to provably hold the assets in order to do so. So it's kind of like skin in the game. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. You know, what you just said, you've got skin in the game. So yeah, once you do have skin in the game, then you want to work a lot harder for it. Right. Makes um, absolute yeah. sense. So uh, exactly. one of the things that I saw um, on your website was that you educate, you build and that you want to actually build um, on a, a, uh, blockchain internet could you explain that yeah sure so um so there's this concept of web 3.0 and it essentially is the evolution from web 2.0 to web 3.0 which means like you know web 2.0 essentially made it easy easier to be a publisher um but you don't own your own data you know you can 
you can tweet, you can use Facebook, you can use Instagram, et cetera, but you don't own your own data. You're like a digital feudal serf. And, um, and a lot of the riches essentially go to very few people. Um, and because there's no ownership model, um, the ownership is own, you know, things are owned by, you know, Mark Zuckerberg or, um, or yeah, Bezos, et cetera. And so they develop these like essentially huge monopolies, like Google has a search monopoly and, and, a, ser and, a, and a search ad monopoly. Um, you know, Facebook has uh, essentially a monopoly on uh, a social graph. Um, Twitter's got its own. Twitter's got its own network effect that's incredibly strong. And these, I mean, that, that's good for those folks. They they want monopolies. Um, however, there could be a lot more value creation um, for one um, by get, giving people the right to own their own data and own their own currency. And that's what Web 3.0 is. Essentially, people. Uh, use uh, essentially private keys to own their identity. They might have like a, a handle that's like, you know, um, like at Patrick um, and no one can take that away from me. It's like, almost like a bearer asset. Um, same thing with, you know, with your Bitcoin or your, your digital assets. Um, you know, those, those kind of are like uh, irrevocably yours should you not lose your keys. And I think this next de this next decade, you know, people are going to essentially it's going to be like a decade of people just growing their wealth in various digital assets. I think toward the end of the decade, people are actually going to own their own data because they see the they see the um, the the benefit of holding their keys for their digital assets. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of like Web 3.0. And you know, if you're going to build Web 3.0, like why not build it on like why not build it on bedrock? You know, like Manhattan has skyscrapers because there's bedrock and um, you can't do that in all cities. Um, so Bitcoin to me is like that bedrock. Bitcoin is like the immovable object. It's not going away. It's, it, 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 it's, it's um, you know, if you think fast forward 20 years from now, like is Bitcoin going to exist? Probably, yeah. yeah. Are, are all the other blockchains going to exist? I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so if we're going to build something for future generations and like essentially you're building a new civilization on the internet, um, if you're going to do that, like, build it on Bitcoin is, is kind of like where my head's at. And, you know, the Stacks blockchain is connected to Bitcoin. And that's what I really like about it. Um, it's kind of like, in, uh, it's kind of like um, inextricably linked to Bitcoin um, for all time. Yeah. Well, I, I'm thinking about too, with, um, with a lot of these platforms that, um, that you don't own your data, they can just shut it off, take it away whenever they want to. It's kind of scary to think about that. You created something, you put it out there, and then you know it's you're you're kind of muted, if you will. So it would make sense to have uh, control of your own data, right? Absolutely. If you're a business owner, if you're a business owner, you could be like block, blockchain herd, for example. If you say the wrong thing, uh, YouTube could demonetize you or take you off the platform. Twitter could take you off the platform. Um, and increasingly, um, you know, society is changing dramatically, even in these past three years. Um, you know, what you can and can't say, like some, some things that should be normal to say have become, um, have become sort of taboo. There are topics that you can't go into. And there are people who are, <clears throat> excuse me, there are people who are um, um, completely, completely um, good intentioned, um, kind of like very, very, uh, very, very intelligent people like Eric Weinstein, for example, who says that they experience a chilling effect when Twitter, you know, Twitter says before they're about to share a link, you know, um, you know, are you sure you want to share this? Because it, you know, it, you know, like it could contain false information or something like that. Like essentially these platforms are becoming censors and, you know, Naval actually, who's in Naval Ravikant, who's an investor in Twitter actually tweeted a day or two ago. He goes, the walls are closing in. You know, Twitter is essentially in the censorship business now, and so what that means is like, you know, if you're building your business, you're now you're now building it, <clears throat> you're not building it with all these, um, you're not building with within within the Overton window, which can can become vanishingly small, and 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 potentially difficult to operate in, uh, especially if you're in the crypto space. Like crypto is all about free speech, you know. <laughs> like, how the heck are you gonna? How the heck are you going to? Um, like 10 years from now who knows <clears throat> who knows whether crypto will be on twitter or youtube maybe it will maybe it won't but 
yeah, people need to protect themselves. And I think they're, I think they're actually willing to pay a premium to, to maintain their followers. Like if you have 500,000 followers, you, you're at risk of losing all of them. That's like, it's like 10 years of work to get there. And, and that would be a shame, you know? So just too much power for, for the platforms to have at this point. Well, he- hence your name, I guess, Freehold. You have the, the freedom to do what you want with what is yours, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, free, freeholds are essentially, um, the, the, the old the reason I like the name is the definition uh, was essentially the right to own property with the freedom to dispose of it at will. So like you are in sole control throughout that whole definition. Um, um, yeah, exactly. You have, you have freedom and, um, and we emphasize hodling um, because people will, I think, benefit and have more freedom the more they hodl and the more they have an impact. Right. So if you want to join Freehold and, um, uh, you know, be a part of the community that where you educate, you build, and you do all these things. What what are the steps in order to do that? Yeah, so if you go to joinfreehold.com and fill out the survey, uh, it's a quick survey. And um, right now, I'm actually interviewing every single person that joins that, that applies. So 300 people have applied in the past month. Wow. And yeah, you know, we've onboarded we've onboarded almost almost 100 people. Um, some of our freeholders have been in like hacker uh, in, in publications like Hacker Noon, uh, and and so far we're having we're having some some early signs of success for like their actual impact. Um, and these are really sharp people. Like these are people just like you and I. Like they they're really intellectually curious. They really want to make an impact. Um, yeah. So once I once I sort of uh, interview uh, each. Each person make sure they they're a unique human being. They're actually like for the cause and not just they're not a mercenary, but rather they're maybe not a closer fake to a person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No deep fakes. Um, they might be more of like a missionary than a mercenary in a sense. And I'll give them the initiation task. They do the initi- initiation task. We send them money, um, Bitcoin for now, and it soon will be stacks, SDX. And then they begin hodling. And while they're hodling, they start getting more tasks and, and they get community challenges and they get bonuses for milestones met. Um, and we're essentially like working as a team rowing in one direction. And um, it's almost like a hybrid of like um, like a like a specific crypto chat with like a, a company. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll have more freeholds. So it's not just gonna be stacks, not just gonna be Bitcoin. We're gonna have more freeholds um, in the future. And the idea is that you, know, you can wake up in the morning <clears throat> and your inbox is full with like real work that would pay a living wage or above and and um you can choose to do what work you want every day right and um and if you continue to hodl you'll be further rewarded it's so that's, sort of that's like a scavenger just... hut here's a list of things that you need to do go get it <laughs> <laughs> yeah well right? the type of task the type of task like feels a little bit different from, like <clears throat> so I've, I've scaled a few companies and the type of task i would give to a two person sales team versus a 300 person sales team is very different. Um, well, it's somewhat different. Like, you, you know, you still want people have, having like personal conversations and reaching out, um, but they might work together to, to, um, to request something. They might, they might, you know, there might be 12 people that comment on a, on a post and that's, that's a form of sales um, versus just one person going, directly to email inbox of the person and saying, Hey, what do you think about X, Y, Z? Like there's different tactics you can have with, with, with a larger um, crowd. That's kind of like working together on a, on a shared, uh, shared goal. So um, do you need to have a wallet? So if you're paying people, yes. do you need to have a wallet? And is there a certain they, wallet that you have to have? They need to have a wallet. Uh, right now, I don't ask. I don't. I just request that they don't use an exchange wallet because exchanges can change the addresses. Okay. We've already experienced that actually, and so uh, we want people to custody their own funds. Like we we do. Um, it, it, if that changes, it would be like a very well considered decision. But we really want people to custody their own funds. We don't want to. We don't be responsible for people losing their crypto. We'd rather them them be responsible for damaging themselves. Okay. Um, um, so yeah, typically like wallets that don't have any custody would be preferable. Okay. Uh, 
So you, you said that you just started a month ago. How many signups did you say you have? Uh, so far, 300. We like just crossed the 300 mark. And I'm doing, I'm doing probably uh, anywhere between, anywhere between like three to nine, uh, 15 minute interviews per day. So I'm just wow. kind of, yeah, it's kind of like just acting as like the front door and like really getting to know people, um, seeing where they, they came from. There's, you know, most, most people started getting into crypto in 2017, unsurprisingly, um, you know, during like the bull run. So uh, you, so you must have a fat wallet then if you're doing all these interviews, because you're, you're getting a lot of stuff done. <laughs> So are you paying well, yourself? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm, pay I'm, 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 I'm paying myself, and and we have, we have, you know, we have, we have a sizable treasury. You know, our treasury is, uh, is, is in the millions of dollars, not the hundreds of thousands, and, um, and we're gonna, you know, when we start seeing the things that are having a high impact, we will double down, triple down, quadruple down, and, pardon me, <clears throat> uh, really put an effort and and funds into into those into those things. Um, right now, what we have is like, essentially, if you get onboarded, you get dripped um, tasks uh, over time. So right now we have like 12 tasks that have been launched. So like um, the first three holders have experienced 12 tasks and have completed them. Um, new free holders have, well, will experience them, you know, in succession. Um, and so essentially it's like, it's like having a bunch of waves come in. Mm -hmm. And all I have to do is make sure that I keep the top of funnel um, you know, kind of like uh, uh, packed with people that are pro Bitcoin, pro wealth creation, pro uh, Web3, and just have these little 15 minute conversations with them and get to know them and and then uh, hang out with them in the chat. Mm -hmm. And as long as I do that, um, we at least have we at least have um, essentially like a pipeline of people who are kind of auditioning in a way uh, through going through the task gauntlet. And so I'm able to see who's super high impact, uh, who's kind of like mailing it in. And um, interestingly, uh, I think this actually, you know, without getting like too complicated about free old, like this actually um, presents the opportunity to create like a HODL score, kind of like a credit score, but it's for like the amount you've earned, the like the, the amount you've earned, the time time you've held for. Right? If you've unhodled, aka liquidated, like what percentage have you done that? Um, yeah, I like that, Patrick. Is that something that you're working on right now? Yeah, I'm calling it HODL score by Freehold, but maybe we'll rebrand it into something. I like that. That's a great idea. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you want to see what everyone is hodling because that's what it's all about. Um, you know, make sure that you do hodl. Hold on to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be. <laughs> Yeah, and, and like that could be a private thing for them to know. It's like, hey, um, you're not you're not receiving as many tasks as you could, because you know you keep on hodling, and like that that's okay to unhodl, but just know that, excuse me, um, you know, hodling is sort of like treated like a vesting schedule, you know, where if you unhodl, you're essentially um, getting access to liquidity that other people aren't, um, but then you're also you're also signaling. Um, you're also signaling, um, in a sense, less conviction. Um, you know, through your through your actions. Like, if you if you sell, I mean, if you sell all your Bitcoin because you need it because it's an emergency, that's totally understandable, but very ill advised. <laughs> for example, like I think selling, I think people should just hold Bitcoin for the next ten years and not sell it. It's going like, <laughs> I think it's like, it's pretty, look at it, what Bitcoin it, is doing right now. I mean, it's just going up, 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 up. So it's... Yeah, I mean, it's like winning the lottery in slow motion. Like, I think Bitcoin for sure is going to be over a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, there's very few investments that that have that have that are almost like engineered like this, you know. And um, you know, people that understand it, I think, just have an information asymmetry compared to the people that are like, "Is Bitcoin real?" You know, it's like, right. "Whoa, you should just be like holding on to Bitcoin." Right. Um, but but these new these new tokens, I think, you know, these new tokens. Will be on the spectrum of like um, very legit, um, you know, to, until they like asymptotically approach Bitcoin, which like I think maybe maybe no token ever does, um, to like total scam. And um, people should have a right to to exit or have capital flight at the speed of light. So if they want to exit from one freehold because they're like you know this is like shaky, and move into a, another freehold where it's <clears throat> stronger, 
they could do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, um, you know, that's sort of, it's kind of funny, that sort of happened in the, med in the medieval ages where people would live between like two or three kingdoms and like opt into the services of each. Um, they like pay their dues, but they'd opt into the, right. they might have like a court system here or like better farm pastures there. In the digital age, um, you know, if you can park your money in various quote unquote like jurisdictions or freeholds, um, you know, you're essentially, you might be getting services that you otherwise wouldn't in one over the other. And, but you know, you, you at least have optionality and you can diversify um, kind of like, sort of like where you live and where your assets are. Um, and so, you know, I think, I think like trends we're gonna see in the future are like <clears throat> kind of like balkanization of the internet, you know, a lot of fracturing, a lot of, a lot of like little sort of enclaves um, where people kind of um, protect their wealth they might earn in those enclaves, like those freeholds. Um, and I think everyone's going to become an investor. Like the amount of people that are coming online and becoming investors because of just crypto and then like Robinhood is, is insane. Um, and yeah. I think that trend's going to continue um, to, that, to the extent it's that- It's happening now. Yeah. You see a lot, a lot of, um, you know, again, you Square and, um, you know, JP Morgan, you've got VCs that are coming in. They're putting so much money into it. Um, so you even see them now on, um, CNBC and, you know, money talk, all of these different spaces. Uh, so that's really encouraging to realize that, uh, this space is really growing. It's not going anywhere. No, definitely not. It is um, this, it's like, uh, Andreas Antonopoulos had a really good quote because, because that omelet is not turning, turning back into an egg. And as long as, as long as, uh, as long as, you know, people have, um, greed and um, a desire to, to uh, improve themselves and help their families out, I think crypto will be around, which is to say it will be, it'll be, it'll be around forever or until a new innovation that is better than it comes around that preserves people's wealth and puts power back in their hands. Right. I agree with that. Um, I mean, I, I think what you've created here um, last year and, and actually uh, started a month ago uh, is incredible. I think it's giving uh, people some opportunity to uh, make money just by doing some simple tasks that you assign them. So that's pretty encouraging. What would you say is um, is the the one of the things that has put up like a block in, in the road, if you will, that's been the most difficult thing for freehold? So far, no difficulty. Honestly, I think it's it, this has been like smooth as butter um you know the lot like launched immediately was in forbes <clears throat> immediately got like 150 um, applicants over the first week and <clears throat> and people have been referring each other people have been writing great content i've been yeah. operating yeah like i have i have the funds to i have the funds to really do some damage here and i'm operating well, go, go do that damage I'm going to, yeah. I'm, I'm operating on like a really, a really, um, I, I, I'm purposefully operating on a really tight budget. <clears throat> and um, how many employees and, do you um, have? Is it just you? Uh, it's, I mean, I, I have, I have a few contractors right now. Okay. Um, and we're going to start building. Uh, we'll, we'll hire an engineer. Uh, we'll hire a couple of engineers once we. Once, once like um, the product, essentially product development is complete. Product development is happening, like live right now. Okay. We're learning, <clears throat> we're learning what features, functionality people want, and and we want to validate this first freehold, which is the Stacks BTC freehold. Mm -hmm. And once that's validated, then and only then will we begin actually putting like a putting um, putting like a sort of like a real a real product together that we then sell to um, more community founders we want to create many 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 freeholds and we want we want community founders to go, and and their respective communities to go from a standing start to generating wealth for building the things they believe in and so that's really important to us um, well the beauty in all this is that um you are you know community based so then you'll be able to to speak to your community to get more um you know tips and ideas on how you can make uh what you're doing better. Absolutely. Actually, that was the task for last week. We, we put out, I think it was a $25 task, 
just give us your thoughts on how we can make the experience better. And there was another task that was like, give us your thoughts on how you would think big about um, kind of growing the stacks we hold and accomplishing our, uh, our OKRs, our, our goals um, in this freehold. <clears throat> so yeah, people, people want to help. I think people want to help. They want to be a part of something that's bigger than them. And, and they want to have an impact that they can measure, um, you know, against that. Yep. And so we're giving that to them. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. So tell us um, how, how can we sign up? How can we get a hold of you so the viewers will know where to go to sign up for Freehold? Yeah, of course. Thanks. Um, you can go to, um, on Twitter, it's just join Freehold. Uh, on, on the web, it's joinfreehold.com. And uh, definitely fill out your survey. We'll, we'll, I'll talk to you and, and interview you if you fill out your survey. And, and I'm Patrick W. Stanley on Twitter and, and yeah, I love Twitter. And so um, yeah. if you're, if you're on there, I'll, I'll see you there. Yeah. So I'm going to have all of those uh, links on the description uh, after we finish uh, this interview, if you will. Thank you. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you so much for spending the time to talk to me about Freehold and I encourage everyone to check it out and see if that's a part of a community that you want to be involved in so you can uh, start making some funds, I guess, if you will, for doing some simple tasks, according to Patrick. So thank you so much for being on, Patrick. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you very much. This is a great time. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Great, great podcast. Looking forward, to, looking forward to hearing it and listening right. to thank other you, of your you. podcasts. So as always, everyone, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Really, really appreciate it. As always, please don't forget to hit that like button and ask your friends to subscribe as well. Let's uh, build this community. Let's make it a lot stronger. So as always, you heard it here on the Blockchain Herd.